Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at the dramatic aerodynamic differences between two very similarly looking Porsches, including this clever golf ball-like pattern under the front splitter. And a quick thank you to Mobile One, who has sponsored a portion of this video, which we'll get to later on. So at first glance, these two cars, well they sure do look alike. They're both Porsche 718 Caymans, they're both the same color, they both have the same engine and the same transmission, but if you work your way back, you'll see one has a big fixed wing. And while the other does have a little pop-up spoiler, it's not playing in the same league. The big wing belongs to the GT4, while the less dramatic exterior belongs to the GTS 4.0. Now, while both cars want to minimize aerodynamic drag, the GTS 4.0 aerodynamics are designed to minimize lift, meaning the force pushing the car up as it reaches higher speeds, while the GT4 aerodynamics are designed to maximize downforce, meaning the force pushing the car down as it reaches higher speeds. For example, the GTS 4.0 has a curb weight of 3,234 pounds, but if you were to measure its weight when the car is traveling at its top speed, the scales would give you a number less than this, because the air around the car is lightly pressing the car up. The Cayman GT4 has a curb weight of 3,276 pounds, but if you were to measure the weight of the car when it's traveling at its top speed, it would read about 321 pounds higher, as the surrounding air pushes the car into the ground. This extra force pushing the car down translates to more grip, meaning it can corner faster and brake shorter. So naturally, you may wonder, how does it do this? Let's start at the front of the car and work our way back. Starting at the new, large front splitter, airflow is divided between traveling underneath the car or for cooling the engine. Above the front splitter, the air passes through a radiator, where it is then routed up and over the hood of the car through a large central vent at the front of the hood. This vent is a prominent feature of Porsche GT cars, like the 911 GT2 and GT3, and this came in GT4. You'll notice it's missing from the GTS 4.0. The hood vent helps prevent this radiator airflow from disturbing the airflow underneath the car. On the GTS, the radiator airflow dumps directly underneath the car with a vent, whereas the Cayman GT4 has this area under the car sealed. And would you look at that! Where the front underbody of the Cayman GT4 is sealed off, there's a panel stretching the width of the car with golf ball-like dimples. I'm not sure if you've ever seen the episode, but Mythbusters actually ran a test where they put dimples on a clay exterior of a car and they found it actually did provide an improvement in aerodynamics. Less drag. And ever since seeing that episode, I wondered why there hadn't seemed to be any automotive applications of the idea, aside from the fact that, okay, maybe a dimpled car would look pretty terrible, but surely there are areas of the car that could take advantage of this. Well, as it turns out, there have been plenty of cars that use this idea, including the Volkswagen Jetta, Rabbit, and other variations of the fifth generation Volkswagen, you guessed it, Golf. It was in the name all along. How did I miss that? In fact, Volkswagen was doing this years before the Mythbusters episode aired. Bugatti also uses a similar technology, which actually Donut Media did a very cool video on if you're interested in checking that out. Bugatti says that if you took two identical golf balls, one with and one without dimples, and you were to strike them with the same impact force, the ball with dimples would travel about twice as far. So how does this work? Well, we need to understand a few aerodynamic principles. The boundary layer is the layer of a fluid, in this case air, that's right next to the car's body. The air in this area wants to cling to the surface. In other words, travel slower than the air further away from the vehicle as it's driving. Now, this boundary layer can have laminar flow, meaning the air flows very smoothly, or the boundary layer can have turbulent flow, meaning the air flow is irregular and swirls around. On a golf ball, these little dimples cause turbulence, meaning little pockets of swirling air, so instead of a laminar boundary layer, you have a turbulent boundary layer. In this case, the turbulent boundary layer stays attached to the golf ball longer, wrapping around the ball, meaning the wake behind the golf ball is smaller when the airflow detaches from the golf ball, and a lower pressure region forms. With a smaller wake, the ball has less drag, and thus can travel farther. Porsche says the same logic applies to the GT4. In their words, at the front end, the special surface on its underside is dimpled, reminiscent of that of a golf ball. As a result, the airflow follows the contour more precisely, reducing drag. Neat. Neat was my addition, if that wasn't obvious. So this dimpled section is sealing off the airflow for the engine's central radiator, but the engine actually has three connected radiators up front, which include two on the sides. These front radiators also provide cooling for the transmission. 
each side radiator dumps its airflow into the wheel well, but the strategy is different for each car. On the GTS, the airflow is dumped outward, directing the airflow out from the wheel well in front of the front tire. On the GT4, the airflow is dumped inward, then a panel redirects that airflow towards the GT4's brakes. Why the difference? Well, unlike the GTS, the GT4 has a separate vent for directing air around the front tires. These bypasses on the front of the GT4 create an air curtain on the outside of the front wheels that counteract the turbulent airflow created in the wheel housing. And they also generate downforce for the front axle. As you can see, this feature is missing on the GTS. As we move back, both cars have nearly complete underbody coverage, with flat panels all the way until you get to the engine. At the engine, there are vents to help with cooling, and you can see there are larger vents for the exhaust manifold. Behind the engine, however, the cars are quite different. The GTS 4.0 is fairly open, allowing you to easily view the exposed underbody. One of the things that's pretty interesting to see is that the exhaust is actually routed through the wheel wells. The center exhaust section is wrapped in a heat shield to protect the damper from high heat, and there's also a heat shield where the exhaust gets close to the tire. From there, the exhaust joins a central, singular muffler, whereas on the previous GT4 there are two separate main mufflers. There is a bypass valve which you can activate with a button in the cabin, which allows for you to redirect the exhaust flow and get a bit more noise. You'll also notice the muffler has a saddle shape to it, which seems unnecessary on the GTS, as there's plenty of space underneath it. Head over to the GT4 and you'll see exactly why this is done. The saddle exhaust allows for the space to put in the GT4's rear diffuser. So yes, on the GT4, this rear underbody is much more covered, with strakes directing airflow appropriately, allowing for the functional use of the rear diffuser. At the GT4's top speed of 188 miles per hour, the rear of the car alone is generating 268 pounds of downforce, and about 30% of that downforce is coming from the diffuser. And the great thing about diffusers is that while they're very helpful for creating downforce, they don't come with a large drag penalty, so the car remains aerodynamic while offering more grip. Porsche says the new GT4 generates 50% more downforce than the previous generation GT4, and yet has a nearly identical drag coefficient. And there's one more cool feature underneath the car. Okay, technically two. On each side, a NACA duct supplies cooling airflow from the underbody up to the engine compartment, directing the ambient air towards the exhaust. Back on top of the car, while the GTS does have a retractable rear spoiler to help reduce lift, the GT4 has a much more prominent, fixed rear wing, which Porsche says provides 20% more downforce than the wing of the 2016 Cayman GT4. Again, overall the car is generating a total of 321 pounds, or 146 kilograms, of downforce at its top speed, about 10% of the vehicle's weight. Finally, on both sides of the car are intakes, each dividing the oncoming air into two sections, one for feeding the engine air intake, and the other providing cool air for the engine compartment. And of course, a big part of both of these vehicles stories is that beautiful 4.0 liter naturally aspirated flat six cylinder engine. Okay, perhaps I shouldn't call it beautiful because I haven't actually seen it. It's quite hidden, but it does sound beautiful revving to 7,800 RPM in the GTS or 8,000 RPM in the GT4. And no, this engine is not related to Porsche's other 4.0 liter flat six found in the 911 GT3. The GT3's engine, pulled directly from the GT3 cup car, with the only differences being the ECU and exhaust, does not take kindly to detuning. It wants high loads and high revs, on top of which it's more expensive, and since the GT4s are mid-engine, while the GT3 is rear engine, the engine would need to be flipped around 180 degrees, and the packaging doesn't work out with the GT4. So, the GT3's engine is derived from Porsche's 3.8 liter engine originally used in the 911 Carrera S, which you see significantly revised for the 2014 GT3, which eventually saw an increase in displacement to what you see today, the 4.0 liter. The GT4's 4.0 liter is a part of Porsche's new modular engine family, which are mostly turbocharged engines. So, for example, start with the Bay 718 Cayman, which has a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder engine. Cylinder bore is 91 millimeters with a stroke of 76.4 millimeters. Add on two cylinders and now you have the turbo 3.0 liter used in the 911 Carrera. 
Go back to the four cylinder and increase the bore to 102 millimeters and you have the 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder used in the Cayman S. Now, add on two more cylinders to that engine and increase the stroke to 81.5 millimeters and you have the naturally aspirated 4.0 liter used in the Cayman GT4. 414 horsepower at 7600 RPM and 317 pound-feet of torque at 5500 RPM. Lift the rear hatch and you'll notice the partial roll cage of the GT4, not present on the GTS 4.0. The mid-mounted engine is hidden beneath the rear cargo compartment, and in fact it's such a clean design back here, I wonder where you actually add coolant or oil, which are hidden underneath these caps. A shout out to my partners at Mobile One who've supported and sponsored Engineering Explained. Over 1 million Porsches have come factory filled with Mobile One over the last 25 years, like the GT4 and GTS 4.0 shown here as well as every other Boxster, Cayman, and 911 variant including the GT3. And I particularly like how well hidden these fill caps are. Taken as a whole versus the more road-friendly GTS 4.0, the GT4's upgraded chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes, and aerodynamic features turn it into a track champ. Just how fast? 7 minutes and 28 seconds around the Nürburgring. 12 seconds faster than its predecessor, and in fact quicker than even the legendary Carrera GT. Now, I've spent the entire video talking about how cool the GT4 is, but if you were to ask me which of these should you buy, my answer would be very simple and dependent on a single question. Do you plan on tracking the car? No, seriously, do you plan on taking it to a racetrack? If the answer is yes, the choice is simple, get the GT4. If you won't be visiting the track, the answer is just as simple, get the GTS 4.0. For less money, you won't notice that you're only down 20 horsepower, and redline is only cut by 200 RPM, while peak torque remains exactly the same, hence nearly identical 0-60 to 60 times. The gearbox is the same, with the same gear ratios, and let's go on a quick broken record tangent, both of these cars, which are relatively lightweight and moderately powered by today's standards, could really take advantage of shorter gearing. 80 miles per hour in second gear is just too high in my opinion, as the car could be quicker and more fun to drive with a gearing adjustment. Tangent over. Versus the GT4, the GTS actually weighs just slightly less, with a more usable rear cargo space without the roll bar in the way, though both cars do offer a very spacious front trunk. The GTS 4.0 is the better road going daily, and just as fun as the GT4 on public roads, but the only problem is if you do buy it, all your friends are going to ask you why you didn't buy the GT4. And that would probably get old. So I guess buy the GT4, if you're going to track it. Or the GTS, if you're not. Honestly, they're both fantastic. Incredible driver's cars, so whatever. Just go have some fun. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.